how's everybody doing so far? Good? All right. So uh, my name is uh, Naun Limus. How many know me? Uh, oh, quite a few, quite a few. All right, so I mean, uh, I have a company, Bill Smart Contracting, I'm the owner. I've been doing this for 16 years now. In uh, four years, I started doing a legal duplex. In uh, four years ago, I started being an investor as well. How many are investors? Almost everybody? Wow, almost everybody. Uh, how many have done legal duplex? One legal duplex or two? Why? Why you? Why do it? Why Eduardo? Why do it? It's if it's hard to do it. Why do you think we get into this business? Why do you think? Because it gives you freedom. You already heard a little bit how the cash flow that people have when you have a, a legal duplex. Because most of you have uh, investor properties and you already know the cash flow that you have, but when you have a legal duplex, it changes. So it gives you freedom. Freedom to, freedom to do what? Freedom to uh, travel or freedom to, uh, to do the things that you want to do. For example, I, uh, I'm planning to retire in four years. I'm planning to retire. Not, not retire fully, but partially retire. Uh, one more property, I'm working one property right now, and uh, I think I'm gonna break even with that property. So it's, it gives you freedom. The second part is satisfaction. It gives you a sense of satisfaction when you finish the, the property. I know it's a headache. I think some, some people already talk about how long it takes uh, to do it. I'm gonna talk about that in, uh, in, a, in a little while. It's a headache. But when everything is said and done, the satisfaction you have, when the inspector just leaves and it gives you the paper that he passed, you feel great. And the other thing is success. Why success? Because when you create a, a legal duplex, uh, it's easier to sell in the future. And uh, uh, somebody was talking that uh, some of the people want to uh, travel or go to their home country, they can uh, move to the basement and rent the top unit and is, is still cash flow. So those three things that I have there is the reasons that I think uh, you should do it. What's the first step? Always the first step is the hardest, isn't, isn't that true? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, the first step, it doesn't matter what you wanna do, it is hard. When I start uh, my business as a contractor, uh, it was hard to do it. You know, should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? And it is hard. And what really helps is who you know. The people who you know will lead you to the right direction. For example, I, I dreamed to be an investor for a long time ago, but I couldn't do it. I talk about it, and, uh, but I couldn't do it. I have the drive, I have the motivation, I, I know this is the best, uh, but my wife never let me do it. <laughs> my wife's right there. You know, but I, I knew Eduardo. I knew Eduardo, and I knew Eduardo didn't have money back on the day. Now he's, he's rich. <laughs> and, and he started investing. And I said, I want to do that. How do you do it? It's the people who you know will lead you to the right direction. And believe me, if you want to do it, this is the right place. And also, know what to do. If you don't know what to do, what the first steps to take, I know a lot of people that really wants to buy a house in converted to a legal duplex. And they've been talking about it for years, you know, two years. Time pass and they're still talking about it and they don't do it. What to know? If you don't have the money, you cannot do it. You cannot think about it, but uh, you have to do the first step. And then, how long would it take to create a legal duplex? This is the first question customers always ask. How long would it take? In my experience, I done a legal duplex in three months, and also a legal duplex in five or six months. It all depends what needs to be done. Some people are looking for a home that is like a just trimming floor, kitchen, bathroom, quick finish. 
and other people are buying homes that are like destroyed because it's cheaper, and they create a legal duplicate. That's my experience. Every time I go to buy a house, I want to buy a house that is completely uh, Destroy, not destroy, but uh, that I, I will demolish the whole house. Because I, I don't want to be saving this, you know, because uh, it's not what I want to do. Some people just want to do simple stuff. It's like painting and trimming, little stuff. And uh, time is always money, you know? Time is always, when, you take, when it takes long, you spend more money. But it also depends on how well informed the owner is. If you are informed, well informed what the steps need to be taken, then the process goes smoothly. For example, you know, like uh, I was doing a little duplex and uh, they needed to uh, cre um, install two meters and two panels and the owner was far away in overseas where all the rich people go overseas <laughs> and uh, the, the electrician couldn't do the two meters if the owner doesn't register the second meter into their name. So there's no way the electrician couldn't do it. So we have to wait until the owner uh, does the step. So that takes time. Also, you know, it takes time when the owner doesn't know what the other ins inspection is. But when the owner is uh, in top of things, you know, like I have a, a customer that, that uh, I was doing the framing, the framing half, half done and, and they go like, can we call the inspector now? Is the framing almost done? You know. So when the owner knows what the steps uh, is next, the job is uh, way faster. The other factor is uh, variable factors. The other uh, problem that we usually have is the things that we don't know. For example, when you go see a home and is the basement is, is finished or partially finished, you don't see what's in there. You don't know what you, you're gonna find. And I find a lot of problems. For example, I find like uh, um, a joist that is cut uh, the wrong way. So as soon as you demolish the basement, you see this joist, and now you have to replace it. And if the inspector uh, sees uh, something that, uh, that we, we couldn't see before, they make you change it, and it takes longer. So it's a little bit of headache. I think I have a picture there. Oh, you see it over there? So this basement, uh, it was, uh, the, the basement was done, so we couldn't see what was under. So when we took the, um, the, the drywall, because the owner wants uh, soundproof, we found that problem right there. Look at that. All the cables were hanging. There was a lot of uh, plumbing that, uh, that was uh, in, the, in the wrong place. So that took two weeks to fix and $5,000 more. Right? So that we couldn't see. So that was the unknown. That will definitely take uh, more time. This is the building uh, pro process of the, to get the, the permit. So you get the application. How many have done an uh, application for legal duplicate? I think it's just one thing. So, oh, you two. 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 Three. So, so the first thing you have to do is uh, just get uh, the application. You can go online. In my case, I like to go to the city. I go to the city hall, I get the application, I do everything right there, and uh, I also get the permit to do the, the driveway as well. So I do everything in one day. I take like uh, two hours because you have to go to all the different uh, uh, floors. But uh, uh, if you buy the homes, you don't need to get uh, the agreement of purchase and sell. You don't, you don't have to take it. But they don't give you the permit until you own the house. But it's, a, it's, it's, um, it's better to do it before you get the house. I think uh, one, you guys are already doing something like that. The, the closing date is, is uh, in like a month, and they're already in the process. So that speeds up the, the process to get the permit. This is an example because some people get really uh, scared uh, how to do it. So there, there are two options. Uh, option number one is this one over here. That's done by me. You know, I, get, I bought the house and I do my own drawings and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's free because you do it yourself, right? But the other one is if you want to pay. You hire a guy that can do it and I think it's uh, $1,500 and I know that some people are charging $3,000. So for $3,000, I'll 
it makes sense to spend sometimes it took me it took me 45 minutes sit down and you know write everything do everything beautiful do you see how beautiful it is <laughs> <laughs> this is the second one the first one that i did i did it right on the city you know i went i didn't know what to do i did it right there the girl that was there said ah you can do it by hand oh really so i got the pen i just went like tick 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 you know, I invent everything in my head, and I give it to her, she goes, oh, I'm beautiful, you know? <laughs> and she gave me the permit. But uh, the second time I went, there was another guy there, and he looked at the drawings and was like, no, this is not good, <laughs> you know? So I, I went home, and I sat down, and I did that one. But see, it took me f about 45 minutes to do it. It's not that clear, but you can uh, kind of see it there. You know, it's not, it's not like very hard. You know, just uh, if you want to be very precise, you can go to your house, the house that you purchased, and measure everything. You know, the windows, uh, the bedrooms, uh, where the kitchen is, uh, everything. Where the bathroom is. If you're going to do some changes, write it down to everything right there. If you present everything clear, it's easier. All right? Most of the time, they give me a call or two, two times, and they just ask me a little question, how high, how, how big the window's going to be, and it passed. So, and then I get my permit. I feel so good that I didn't pay $3,000. There's anybody here that does the drawings? Drawings here? No? Okay. So, what the, what, how many inspections there are? How many uh, times the inspector will come? So the first time is uh, the pre-construction inspection. Um, every time I do a legal duplex, I like to do this, the first one. Some people omit that one. They said, oh, no, no, I'm not going to call the inspector. I like to call, to call them to, to, uh, to a pre-construction inspection. Why? First thing is you create this relationship with the inspector. The other thing is you ask key questions. I'm going to do the window over here. What do you think? What do you think about this plumbing? It's existing plumbing. I just, uh, I'm doing one right now for myself, one legal duplex. The plumbing, the existing plumbing was bad. I knew I had to change it. So the inspector came and he looked at it and said, well, it's existing. You can leave it the way it is. You decide. So I decided to do it right, so I, I did it again. But uh, you can get away with a lot of stuff if you tell them, you know, this is how it is. This is existing. What do you think? And that relationship that you create with them, that, that you want to do things right, is, is good. It's good for you. And then the underground inspection, there's all, there are 12 right there. And this is if every single one pass. But most of the time, you know, they come. Even though I've been doing this uh, legal duplex for four years now, I still don't know everything. And I still, depending on the inspector, some inspector said, this is good. Other inspector said, this is not good. I got a, I got a, I finished one. And uh, I, before I finished, I talked to the inspector. And uh, I said, can I leave this room the way it is? It was kind, kind of finished. And he was like, is that going to be a storage? I said, yes, leave it the way it is. So when I called the final inspection, the first inspector quit. <laughs> and then they sent me another one. So the other one came. He didn't know what we talked to the, the first inspector, inspector. And he looked at, are you going to leave that over there? I said, yeah. No, you can't leave it like that. So he didn't pass it. And that job took me two weeks to finish. So the first, ins the first uh, inspection is very is key. Because you, you create this relationship with them. You ask them questions. And if they see that the contractor is doing everything right, it's easy. Right now I'm doing one that the inspector came. He just looked at me and said, hey, no, how are you? And now uh, oh, everything is good. Just keep going. So it's beautiful. So, uh, and then all the, all the inspection you can, uh, when, when you get the, 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 the permit, you're going to see all this over there. And then how to avoid nightmares? Because it's a headache already. You know, when you're doing a legal duplex, it's already a headache. It's not easy to do. But how to avoid nightmares in the process. First, the zoning, he already talked about it. You know, before you buy the, the home, make sure that house, you can convert it into a legal duplex. Uh, you can call or you can go to the website. Me, personally, I go to the city. And I see it, this is the address, can I see it? Can I convert it? I make sure before I buy the house that it can be converted into a legal duplex. Because after you buy the home and it cannot be done, 
you're in trouble. And then contractor, this is very important. Very important. Find the right contractor. Ask key questions to the contractor. Have you done it before? Do you know, I have a friend, I have a friend that uh, he went to see a job and the owner asked him, do you know this inspector? And he, it happens to be that he, he was with me when the inspector came to the house and, and he goes, oh yeah, I know that inspector. And he got the job just because he knew the inspector. When the contractors already deal with the inspectors, they have experience, right? So ask, ask key questions to the contractor because contractors, if they don't know the process, they can just go ahead and cover, put the drywall, and then what happened if the inspector comes and said, um, you forgot to do the fire separation or you forgot to do the, the insulation, whatever. You know, so if you uh, get the right contractor, it's gonna be smooth. Give me a call later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then resources. How to avoid nightmare? Resources. Plan very good because I can I can uh, I can give you a price for example right now just to convert a legal duplex will cost around from ninety thousand dollars to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars roughly right but it could go more like for example uh, uh, the the one I'm doing right now uh, when the inspector came he goes the incoming line of the house is only a hundred amp you need to change it I said, oh, no problem we're gonna change it but he didn't tell me that it was underground and it was like, a, well, maybe 200, no, maybe 100 meters. Far, uh, we have to mm, dig everything. It was a big job. If they did it, the city did it, they, it cost me $30,000. So, but I said, no, I'll do it. So plan ahead the resources. And then again, uh, the first time I said, book a pre-construction inspection, you avoid a lot of nightmares when you do this, all right? Just because of the relationship you have with them and the question you ask. Then the electrical. If, like I said, if the line coming in is only 100, you cannot do two meters and two panels. I mean, you still do two panels, but not two meters. But if you have 125 coming in, you can do two panels because the inspector allows you to do 100 at the top and a 60 at the bottom. I already have that experience. But if it's 100, they say you cannot do it. So you have to upgrade to 200. The other one is the mechanical room. Like uh, some people buy a home and say, oh, this furnace is, is good. It is working, yes, it's working. But uh, how, how more time, you know, how much life is in the, in the furnace or the water heater or the water softener? So that little room right there is, uh, is key, you know, because it is empty, it's open, so why not do everything new from the beginning? Well, I'm, I'm assuming that the, the furnace is, uh, is all enough, right? And, uh, and what else, well, that's, uh, that's one example of what we did in one, one of the house. How many have experience with those uh, water, uh, water heaters? Yeah, good. In my experience, they are, well, I've been doing it for one year right now, and they work fine. And then these are the things that are essential. He already talked about separate entrance, because this will cost you from $12,000, depending how why you want the, the, the stairs going to, your, to the basement, to uh, $20,000 if you want something big, like six feet wide. It looks amazing. How many have been in the Eduardo home? His house? Do you see this, the steps going down? Beautiful, but it's six feet. But if you want to do those narrow ones, it's twelve thousand dollars. All right. So why go into that? You know, uh, the the moment you're buying a home, make sure they already have a separate entrance, right? But if they don't have a separate entrance, if you like the house, you can still do it. And then the egress windows. You know, uh, the city only asks you to do one egress window. The house I'm doing right now, I'm doing five big windows. So as soon as you get into the basement, you go this, wow, this is amazing, it's, it's bright, it's white. This is core. The core, I don't know if you are, you are, you're dealing with this, if you, if you haven't done a legal duplicate, that's not required. But this is the little things that takes time. You know, like the furnace room has to be covered completely for fire separation, and all the pipes that goes to the other unit has to be sealed with this fire caulking. 
So it takes time, it takes about a week work to do it. It's very tedious. It's cheap. Instead of putting a uh, sprinkler, you know, you can do all this, it's cheaper, but it takes a lot of time. And then this also is, uh, is a little, um, a little uh, hard to do. That's, uh, if you see this over here, that's um, an alarm that goes right in the furnace. So when the smoke comes in, the furnace, uh, the alarm uh, senses and shut off the furnace. And also, was, uh, it, before, only one alarm was required in the main floor. Now, every bedroom has to have an alarm, and they're not cheap. They're very expensive. 